GPOG and want to welcome all of the UGs as this is uh, Take 10, 10 of 10. I think, Belinda, um, we are like two-thirds done um, through this series, and um, I love it because I'm learning a lot on tips and tricks of using Excel. So again, this is Belinda Allen, who is both a Microsoft MVP and also a GPUG All-Star. Um, she's sharing, I, I'm calling her Pay It Forward Tour. She's sharing, <laughs> she's sharing tips that she has learned uh, not only through her experiences, but also um, from other people as well. And so I really, really am excited. And I've got uh, my computer ready to rock and roll. I've got Excel open. Everybody open Excel because I was following along with Belinda when we uh, had this last time so that uh, we can all take advantage of it right away. So Belinda, I can see your screen. Why don't you go ahead and take it away? Okay, great. Yep, this is number six. So we are moving right along. And it's funny because I looked at the rest of the agenda and I was uh, uh, kind of surprised to see that it looks like it's uh, mostly Jared Hall from here on out. So today we're going to be talking about in, uh, using stored procedures to access our, our data, um, our dynamics data uh, in Excel, and the use of parameters. And again, this is something that um, I knew how to use stored procedures, but I was not good with parameters, stored procedures that had parameters, uh, until Jared Hall showed me that. And um, he is just wonderful, and I believe he's going to be at the summit, so you should check out anything that he is um, uh, presenting at the summit and attend, because he's a really, really good presenter. So this is something he showed at the Excel shootout at Convergence in 2014. And forgive me for being lazy for uh, and doing the slideshow. I even had animations. I don't know why I'm being lazy today. Um, so yeah, a picture is worth a thousand words. And this is why I love using Excel to do a lot of our reporting because we can really do some really cool visualizations with what we're going to do. And today is no exception to the rule. Um, we're going to be doing both things basically at the same time, using a stored procedure and adding the parameter. That's our agenda. So we're going to get started here. Um, this one is going to be slightly geeky. So if you're not a SQL person um, and you're not like uber technical, I want you to focus on, because this is only 10 minutes so you can endure, but I want you to focus on what the capabilities are, what the end results are, and you can always enlist someone to help you with the stored procedure because this will give you much more flexibility in a lot of different areas than the traditional approaches to getting to your data. So a view, um, for those of you who may not know the difference between a view and a stored procedure, uh, a lot of what I've been doing so far, I've been accessing data through SQL views. And a view is just a virtual table and the data can come from one or more tables in the SQL database. So it's just a way of grouping things together and giving them names that make sense to us and maybe adding a little bit of scripting. Where a stored procedure is a group of SQL statements or some coding uh, to the database. And what's important to us in this respect is we can put in parameters. And by parameters, I mean you could go in and tell it, I just want to see this customer or I just want to see this vendor, or this account number, or this date, or this date range. And so being able to do that in Excel, uh, you could do the parameters. Now, I know you're thinking, well, we could do that in a view. But when you do it in a view, all the data is sitting in Excel, and you're having to work on it. In the stored procedure, when you're connected using a stored procedure, it goes to SQL and lets SQL do the work, and then brings back only the results to Excel. Now, I've, I've gone back and forth with some really smart technical people, which is better, viewer stored procedure, which is faster, which is better, and you'll get all kinds of answers. So um, in certain respects, a stored procedure will operate faster. Sorry, John Lather, but it will because of the way it's working. If your Excel is 32-bit, you might always want to use stored procedures because the bulk of your data will remain in your database and it'll just bring the result set back as opposed to bringing all your data over and just looking at what you want to see. And you're going to see how similar they uh, work together as we go along. So that's just a little bit, but again, um, the big advantage of the stored procedure is it can be used by multiple clients 
that need to use the same uh, kind of, uh, of data, but maybe want to have different inputs. And then that way you could just do the modification in one place and it'll update. And by that I mean if you have salespeople and maybe I look at these three salespeople and you are also a salesman and you look at the other three, we could use the same one and just look at the ones we're interested in. And the data that was brought back to our Excel is only the ones we're interested in. Okay, so using a stored procedure, what we're going to do, uh, and I'm, this time I'm actually showing you the screenshots before we do it, so bear with me. We're going to actually connect using a table, and then we're going to, in the command text, tell it to go get the stored procedure. So we're going to call it out there. And this is also where we define our parameters. So in this case, if there is a parameter, this one, this one looks at the top customers with the top balances. And the one on the left, I said, show me the top 10. You can see there's the parameter name and the top 10. And on the one on the right, I put in a question mark and said, ask me. And when you're in SQL, up here at the top, let me just see if I can put a frame around that. The one at the top here, um, when you're in the SQL guys and you're looking at the stored procedures, there's a parameter section, and if there's anything that starts with at, the returns integer will not give you that. Uh, that's not a parameter. That means that's the parameter, so I'm going to tell it how many customers I want to see. All right, enough of the geeky stuff. Let's get into the good stuff. So I'm going to pull up an existing Excel customer. So we're going to look at the one that I just have the parameter for, and this is top 10 customer balances. Now this one's connected to a stored procedure. So watch what happens when I just change that field to five. Well, I guess I'm not refreshed. <laughs> That's funny. There we go. Okay. So I just refreshed. We have five now. If I change it to 20, there we go. We have 20 now. So I have it set to automatically refresh. So every time I tab off that field, it's going to automatically change the number for me no matter what it is. And that's pretty darn cool. So let's look at another one. Let's look at a budget one. Now these, I, I am sorry guys that are all the UGS other than GP. I have access to a GP database, so that's the one we're having to look at. But it, the data is not as important as what we're doing. So here I am looking at a list of all my budgets, and I can see my from date and my to date. And you'll notice that it's looking at all the budgets that fall within these dates. So if I were to come up and say only show me 2017, notice how it changes automatically to just show me the budgets that are 2017. Now I'm using view or stored procedures that already exist in GP, but there are some other stored procedures. You could create your own stored procedures as well. So I'm going to do a little cheat factor here on this one. And you notice I had my commands here so I could see what I'm doing and I could remember the names of them. So let's do one live. So I'm going to create a new one and I should have used my previous um, Excel tip and clicked right there. So what I'm going to do is click on data from other sources. I am using Excel 2013 and I'm going to use Microsoft Query. So I'm going to do something simple. And um, I'm going to even go the long route this first time and create a new data source, just so you could see. And we'll call this Excel 10, since it's our 10 of 10 of 10. And I'm going to choose uh, which driver I want. So I'll just choose SQL Server, and I'll click Connect. And it's prompting me to connect. I'm going to put in the name of my server. And OK. All right. The reason I did this is because I want to be able to control which database I'm looking in. So on this login, I'm going to click on Options, and I'm going to find my database. So I want a database called, I'll get it in a minute, sorry. Don't mean to make you guys drunk. 202, there we go. So that's the database I want. That's my Dynamics database. And I'm going to connect to it, and then I'll click OK. Because now I've got that created. If I just highlight that and click OK, and it popped up on another screen. Here are my tables and views. Out of the box, Excel will only connect to a table and a view. So I'm just going to grab my first 
this happens to be a view, but the first one. It doesn't matter what table or view you connect to. You just need to connect to one table and one field. So I'll insert that and click Next all the way through. And what I've done essentially is, and I'm just going to dump that in a table, is I've created a connection to my SQL database. Now I can do some other things. So what I'm going to do first is um, I am going to actually let me move this down one line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is connect and change it from my table to my stored procedure. But before I do that, I'm going to enter my parameters in. So I'm going to look at gross profit margin. This is a KPI. For those of you who are in the GP land, this is a stored procedure that exists that SQL Server Reporting Services uses. It's a KPI for gross margin. So I'm going to put in um, a date and a period periodicity. Okay, so what I'm going to do is come in and put in like 4-12-2017 for my date, and I'm going to put in the year as my periodicity, so what kind of period I'm looking at. Now, I'm going to highlight this, click on data, go to properties, and I'm going to expand my property window here, and then I'll go to definition. And don't worry, because I know I did that fast, you'll be able to get the recording and do it again. Now down here in the command text, you see I have my um, select statement that's going to that view. I'm going to change this to execute that stored procedure. So first I'll tell it what database, and then I'll enter in the stored procedure. And this is where you might want to make friends with someone who's really geeky and uh, start looking up some stored procedures. Okay, so there's my calling my stored procedure. Now I have to address my two parameters that exist with that. So I'll start with the first one, which is called user date, is equal to, and I'm going to put in a question mark, so it asks me what the user date is. And then I'll do the same for the time unit. And then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Now when I do that, it says what's parameter one? Parameter one was the date. So I'm just going to simply, with my cursor there, click on the date and tell it to refresh those. And then it says what's two? And that's the periodicity. So I'm going to click on that, the year, and click on those. And once I do that and close out, it brings in my um, gross profit for that year. And this is a KPI, and that's why it's not detailed. You could make it detail, you could make it a list, you can make it whatever you want to make it. This just happens to be um, a, uh, a KPI, so we're only interested in the numbers. But watch what happens when I change this to month. Notice it changes right there. So quarter, better put year back in, huh? <laughs> there you go, so we're back to 25%. Let me change this to 12-31-2016. So look how this is current balance is 0.6. So you can see how this is changing and it's live. I do want to show you how this can work to your advantage. So again, my apologies to all the, of the other Dynamics non-GP people, but you will get the idea of how powerful this can be. This is for all you GP people, with 2013 R2 comes these dashboards. And if I go to the connection for these dashboards, so I go to data, and, and instead of going to properties, I'll just start with connections, and I'll see all, I'll see all my connections out there. And this one happens to be a view. Some of them are different things. This one's connecting to an office data connection. But down here, I have on these quick ratios, are using a stored procedure. So if I go to properties on those, I'm back at that property window, so I'll click on definition, and I can see that these are you calling the stored procedure, and in this case, it's going, the time unit is equal to the period, and the period has actually been defined in this one as whatever's in here. So notice when I change my uh, timeline, that everything on the report changes as well. So the moral of the story is you can do a lot of the calculations within SQL in stored procedures and track them that way. And I see I'm three minutes over, so let me get to the end here. Um, here, we'll do Q&A real fast. 
So here's my connection. Kim, is anyone putting questions in? And while she's getting back online, here's my shameless self-promotion of the book that Mark Polino know and write, which includes a lot of Excel stuff. Sorry. And um, uh, I'll shoot for questions now. Excellent. And yes, check out the book. All right. If you have any questions, type those in the right hand.